so today we're going to talk about the eight most important things to consider when you're high speed machining. So we're going to be using the core five end mill today and we're going to be roughing out a hydroform block for the aerospace industry. All right, let's get it cracking. Here we go. This is 500 inches per minute at 150 thousandths radial at a depth of three inches for an MRR of 225 cubic inches per minute. Number eight, holder rigidity. Now you notice we're using a Kenna Metal Hydroforce holder here and this holder is super big and super rigid. Number seven, pull out. A lot of times if you have your tool fully engaged axially, you're gonna pull that tool right out of your holder. Now this tool has the safe lock grooves in it, so it's literally impossible to pull it out of the holder. Number six, tool. First of all, your tool has to be capable of high speed machining, and it's best if it has chip splitters. This is gonna help you with chip management, and your chips are gonna be smaller, so they're not gonna be built up and give your augers hell. Number five, stick out. Now this may be obvious, but tool stick out is one of the most common problems people have with their processes. You always want this to be the absolute minimum that you can get away with. A short tool is a rigid tool. Oh yes! That's what I'm talking about right there. Number four, spindle rigidity. Now we're running on an HSK 100 spindle here and it's super rigid, but if you have a smaller machine, you can still utilize these same methods and type of cut to maximize your productivity. Number three, fixture rigidity. Now these shunk vices are absolute monsters, but in addition to these vices, we're also using serrated jaws. Now these jaws have six rows of serrated teeth, so there's no way we're pulling this stock out of our vise. Number two, software and tool path. You have to have a software that's capable of creating constant engagement tool paths. Mastercam is great at this. And finally, number one, knowing your machine. Now I know that this cut is gonna require 67 horsepower and 44 foot-pounds of torque. When I take a look at our torque chart, I can see that I have 100 horsepower available at 8,000 RPM and 59 foot-pounds of torque available. So you can see here on our spindle load, we're barely even scratching the surface. We're not even at 50% of our max load. <laughs> Smack me with chips. Mm, yes. Oh, yeah. So you can see that we're running this dry today. And of course, that's just for filming. Normally we'd be running with coolant, but we want you guys to be able to see what's happening here. This cutter is such a beast. You see, we've barely been cutting for five minutes now and this whole part is almost roughed out already. And this is no small part. I mean, this thing's three foot long, eight inches wide and four inches thick. After watching this, it's easy to see why they call this tool the king of roughing. Done. Seven minutes and we just took this part all the way from a raw piece of stock to a roughed out part. All right, let's check it out. All right, so you can see that this was no small piece of stock. This thing is almost as long as our three foot tombstone. And this one cutter was able to chew all this material away with absolutely no problem. I could probably literally make a thousand of these before I had to replace that tool. All right, and speaking of the cutter, you guys are always asking to see what the tool looks like after cuts like this. So let's check this thing out. Now we weren't running this cutter like Trevor would at one millimeter an hour. We were running this thing at 500 inches a minute. That's a material removal rate of 225 cubic inches per minute. We weren't running it like Trevor. <laughs> oh, sorry, Trevor. <laughs> I was talking about a different Trevor. <laughs> me, 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 me. Trevor, crybaby. 
Now that was some pretty awesome high speed machining. And again, this is the Core 5 end mill from Kenna Metal, and we carry this in our online store. So check it out and help us support free education. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys again next time. How'd that make you feel, Trevor? That made me feel sad. Good, it should, because I'm standing on all these gigantic chips instead of all that pixie dust you sprinkle around. <laughs> yeah, well, at least the pixie dust makes magical things, Barry. True.